Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Are you serious? It's time to address something that everybody's a little bit nervous about. But folks, welcome to the coming apocalypse today. Who is the Antichrist? I mean, that, that, that is on everybody's mind. At some point in time, people, the number one question I get, when's Jesus coming? When's the end of the world? When's the rapture? Who's the Antichrist? Do I have to take the mark of the beast? These are some of the questions you hear all the time. But who is the Antichrist? Well, what does the Bible say about the Antichrist? Is there any clues in the Bible to help us understand who this man of sin, the lawless one, the son of perdition, can we get an idea? And is he on the earth now? That's another question. Is he alive today? And if so, how close are we to the coming of Jesus Christ? We'll talk about it when we come back in just a moment. A powerful two-part DVD on Isaiah's apocalypse. It's an in-depth study into the prophetic words of Isaiah as he began to unravel the last days just before the coming of Jesus Christ. It's earth shattering. The heavens will be shaking. The earth is certainly quaking. But the prophetic message is so on track that soon many will realize we're in the end times. Get it now. All right, folks, all right. Now, the concept of an antichrist at the end of days to challenge Jesus Christ and his return is not just a concept. It is a biblical prophecy from the Old Testament all the way to Revelation. And there's been forerunners or there's been precursors, if you will, that we have seen in uh, historically. Well, let's start with the qualification of the Antichrist. We actually get that. Daniel has a vision, and he starts to talk about a leader that rises in the last days, and I call this the, one of the qualifications of the Antichrist. Here's what he says. If you go to Daniel chapter 8, begin reading in verse 23. The Bible says, and in the latter time, which would mean... Uh, of course, anytime you see latter time, last days, latter days, uh, the end times it, it, throughout the Bible, you know we're referring to biblical prophecy of the end time period. And here's what it says. And in the latter time of their, trans, of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Let's take a look at this for a minute. He comes in the last days when the transgressors are come to full. That means when the the, the abominations and the sin and the wickedness has come to a full, fully the world is filled with violence as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus says, it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. One scripture says when there'll be a great falling away first, okay? Uh, and that son of perdition, the man of sin, shall be revealed. So there's no question Daniel's referring to the end times and the fact that there's this king, this, but it, it's, a, it's a small K. So he's not a political leader at first, but he's rising up in the ranks and becomes the Antichrist in one day. Um, this king of fierce countenance, and he understands dark sentences. In other words, he's involved in the occult. He not only understands the kingdoms of the world, the political system, but he understands the witchcraft, the voodoo, the hoodoo, the, the sacred texts of darkness, the curses, the sorcery, the dark 
the dark uh, black mass, the occultism. Uh, he's involved in everything like that. He has studied Alice, uh, Alice Bailey and Aleister Crowley and the Satanic Bible and everything else that has to do with it, the Book of the Dead from Egypt and whatever else. I mean, this guy understands witchcraft and how I can prove it to you. It says he understands dark sentences. He shall stand up. Now, the Bible says, and we'll get to that in a minute, that he walks into the temple of God in Jerusalem. He walks into the third temple. He'll walk into the temple of God. It is the temple of God, by the way. It's not the temple of the devil. He walks into the temple of God before the worshipers of God. And declares he's God. So it's a hijacking. Once again, just like the Babylonian Empire took over Solomon's temple in 586 B.C., just like the Romans took over King Herod's temple in 70 A.D., the Antichrist will walk into the third temple, all three of them in Jerusalem in the end times, and hijack it and declare he's God. He'll stand up. And verse 24, his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. So he gets his power from the devil. He, he's possessed with demons. I, uh, I listened to an interview uh, by um, Art Bell. He interviewed in 1997, he interviewed a former Vatican exorcist priest by the name of Father Malachi Martin, who quit the Catholic Church after 25 years, because he, and he was an exorcist, and he dealt with demonic spirits, and uh, God revealed to him the demonic spirit of the Antichrist and told him how powerful the Antichrist would be. He said he would be a man that will speak great swelling words, have men at advantage. He will also understand all mysteries of darkness and light, and he will be able to solve insuperable problems or impossible problems, which will give him his power, and the world will turn to him. So there's something happening on the earth that will be so traumatic that men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things coming upon the earth because the powers of heaven are going to be shaken and people are going to be dying and there'll be disease and famine. Read Matthew 24. And he steps in and has the solution to solve it. Maybe he knows there's an asteroid going to hit. Maybe he, he could fix a plague that's taking over and killing the people of the earth. Not sure what it is, but he has it in powerful ability, but it's not his power. He gets it from Lucifer. Now let's move on. His power shall be mighty, but not of his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully. He shall prosper and practice. When you see the word practice in the Bible, it's always referring to practice of witchcraft. All through the Bible, we can show that to you, but it, it's, it's craft. Another word they'll use sometimes is just craft, okay? Um, so he's, he, he's, he, he has all this tools. This is why he can do, he can call fire down from heaven. He can do all kinds of different lines, signs, and wonders, it says in Revelation. Let's read, and it goes, and he shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, which I believe means he's, he will do, uh, he'll really do a number on Christians and Jews. He's very similar to Adolf Hitler, who not only killed six million Jews, but killed seven million Christians, which nobody talks about. So he has a very, Hitler had these characteristics, believe me. I mean, he was, he, but he was the precursor. He's like the John the Baptist before the Antichrist. John the Baptist, then Jesus Christ, Adolf Hitler, and then the Antichrist, okay? But let me read on. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper, okay? Craft, so there it is again. Witchcraft, satanic, darkness. And he'll, and he'll use this stuff bring nations into, into his web. He shall cause, through his policies, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart. He is going to be so conceited and prideful and haughty and dangerous. Uh, he, he, he literally will deceive himself. And by peace he shall destroy many. So he's going to be talking peace, but he's actually going to bring war. He speaks like a lamb, but he has the words of a dragon. And he shall also <clears throat> stand up against the prince of princes. See the capital P? That's Jesus Christ, the prince of peace. So he will confront Christ, but he shall be broken without hand. He cannot win. Now, turn your Bibles, if you will, to St. John's Gospel, chapter 17. Jesus 
makes mention of a terminology called the son of perdition. Let me read it to you. Jesus talks about his 12 disciples that he chose. He even prays a prayer for them. But he says these words in verse 12. And while I was with them, let's read verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that, have, that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. That's the scripture may be fulfilled. Who was he talking about? Judas Iscariot. So he mentions Judas Iscariot, the one disciple who betrayed him, and says, couldn't save him. He's the son of perdition. Now, Jesus in one place said, I've chosen 12 disciples, and one of you is a devil. He was referring to Judas Iscariot. And so an incredible, that's the first time the term son of perdition is used in the Bible, and it's in reference to the betrayer of Jesus Christ. A characteristic of the Antichrist, Daniel 7, excuse me, Daniel chapter 8 uh, that I just read to you, and now Jesus calling him a devil or the son of hell, the son of perdition. Now turn, if you will, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 because who's the Antichrist? Well, we're going to start to narrow down the characteristics of him so it'll be easier for you to identify as we get closer and closer to this period. Because believe me, I believe he is alive on the earth. I've had a vision of which I seen a man walking in the midst of about three, four hundred people. They, they were diplomats. I was in a balcony and I'm looking down on the floor and they were diplomats. There was a stage. I could not see who was on the stage. But there was an individual that the Holy Spirit zeroed in on me, on a man. He looked like he was probably in his 30s, early 30s maybe, somewhere in there. He was thin. He had dark hair. He was wearing a sport coat. And he was in the back of this crowd on the floor standing. But he was working his way to the front. And he was literally, you know, easing and pushing and working his way. And as he was going to the front, he kept pointing, making eye contact with different people. He kept pointing at them and making acknowledgement as he worked his way up. And the Holy Spirit, and this was in a, a dream, the Holy Spirit came to me and said, he's identifying his 10 kings. So they're coming out of apparently some type of diplomatic arena. I could throw out a few possibilities, but I'm just telling you, you know, it, I, I don't know which one. I mean, there's a lot of diplomatic organizations, so for me to just point one out would be wrong. But certainly you get the ideal, and you can do the math on that. But let me read to you this. Um, and he worked in his way. He was working his way. And the Lord was revealing to me, and I couldn't see his face. I could only see the, from the behind, from behind. And, but uh, it, was, it was a revelation from the Lord that he's alive. He's on the earth. And he's working his way now to the front. How much time do we have before he gets there? I don't know. But uh, certainly it's important. And uh, when we come back in a moment, we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to now tell you what he will do, when he will do it, and who is he. We'll be right back. A powerful two-part DVD on Isaiah's apocalypse. It's an in-depth study into the prophetic words of Isaiah as he began to unravel the last days just before the coming of Jesus Christ. It's earth shattering. The heavens will be shaking. The earth is certainly quaking, but the prophetic message is so on track that soon many will realize we're in the end times. Get it now. All right, folks, all right. Now grab your Bible and go with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's read what the Bible says. I love this because you're not to have any fear, okay? Don't be afraid of the Antichrist. You got Jesus Christ, okay? And, and so it's important you know that. But you've got to know what's going on so that you can identify how close you're getting to the coming of the Lord. Now look what Paul says. Apostle Paul's writing to the church of Thessalonians, and he doesn't want them to be afraid of the information they're getting ready to get. So he says these words, Now we beseech ye, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or 
be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. I don't want you afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid of anything I'm going to tear with you. Don't be troubled in your spirit, your mind, your, the word. Don't be afraid of anything. But you've got to know this. And then he goes on to say, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That's the only other time that that term is used, Judas Iscariot and the Antichrist, okay? Because it's the same characteristics. Uh, he opposeth and he exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped. So this man is, uh, he is, wants to be glorified and he exalts himself. And that's what Daniel said he would do in Daniel chapter eight. Uh, and he, he wants to be exalted above all that is called God, that's the church, or that is worshiped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I mean, are you serious? You talk about bold. You talk about brazen. You talking about insanity. You talk about uh, abomination. You want to talk about blasphemy. This is the epitome of it. And remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know that withholdeth, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in this time. So we are getting ready for the revelation of the Antichrist. And how does he do it? Well, he walks into that temple, the third temple, before the worshipers of God and declares he's God, and he has the power to do it because he has the backing of the world, and he does it, and uh, he makes that incredible proclamation. I can't, it's amazing. Uh, look, and, and the Bible tells you that, uh, look, in verse 9, it says, even uh, him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So people who follow him are going to be deceived. They're going to be completely confused that is why he's the author of confusion. It is a mystery of iniquity that already is working. The wicked will be revealed. Re go back to verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It's already in play. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. At some point, the bride in Christ, the, the, the ability, look right now. And there's been some confusion on this, but one thing's for sure. God allows the devil to have some room to operate. Sometimes God just lifts his hand and lets Satan do what he's going to do until he shuts him back down, okay? And this mystery, uh, this iniquity is already in work. It's already in process. We can't stop it. It's going to happen. It is a prophecy. What we can do, though, is be aware of it, be ready for it, and tell others what we're seeing uh, so that they give their life to Jesus Christ. Look at verse 8, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So praise God, the Lord is going to wipe him out in the last days. Now turn your Bible into Revelation 13 as we move along here, because who is the Antichrist? Well, Pastor, who is he? <clears throat> well, he's the man of sin. He's, the, he's a man of sin. He's a lawless one. All right? He uh, has no desire for women, it says in Daniel. He is uh, full of pride, full of witchcraft, full of a peace plan that brings destruction instead of peace. Exalts himself above God. He's an, he's an abomination. He's a blasphemer. I mean, he's got a lot of characteristics. And all you got to do is keep your eyes open, and you will see things in the next few years that's going to blow your mind. And you're going to not even believe, you, can't, you won't even believe that it's happening. But you will see soon the coming of Christ. In Revelation 13, John says I, in verse 1, I stood upon the sand of the sea. I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. 
So it's a global new world order, a one world government. This is the rise of the Antichrist. And this Antichrist, when you read down, he does a lot of wickedness. He has a deadly head wound. Let's check this out. Verse 3, I saw one of his heads as it was wounded uh, to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. He has these 10 kings. I told you I've seen him, identify him. It also says that in Revelation 17 that he chooses 10 kings and he makes the 10 people and he makes them kings in one day, okay? And uh, verse four, and they worship the dragon, that's Lucifer, which gave power to the beast, the Antichrist, and they worship the beast, the Antichrist, saying who's likened to the beast, the Antichrist, who's able to make war with him, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given to him to continue for 42 months. So he has three and a half years to, God lifts his hand and allows him three and a half years to wreak havoc on the earth, to persecute. And look what it says in verse 6. <clears throat> and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. What? It was given to him to make war with the saints. Who? And to overcome them. I hate that. And power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So he is the epitome of disaster. He is the Adolf Hitler times 10. He's come for the final battle. He's lost every time. We talked about this last week, how that he constantly, he wanted to stop, Lucifer wanted to stop the plan of God, tried to stop every time, and he failed, he failed. This is it. He knows it's winding down. He makes his move. He has one opportunity to turn the whole world against Jesus Christ for the final battle of Armageddon. And he needs the world, and he persecutes the saints, and he attacks the people, and, he, and, he, and he, he convinces the world to follow him. Who is he, and, and, and how does he, where does he come from? You know, I've, I've interviewed a lot of people about that question. It's kind of funny because you get a lot of different answers. One, one man, Wallace Shubat, you may have heard of him. Uh, he used to be a contributor on CNN and, and on Fox News uh, from the Middle East. And Wallet Shubat was on my show one time. I was interviewing him, and he said to me, Paul, he's going to come out of Turkey. And I said, really? Yes, he's going to come out of Turkey because he's going to have Assyrian blood, which uh, uh, in the Bible, the Medes uh, were known as, or today they're known as the Kurds, but the Medes were also, some of those people in that area were known as As Assyrians, not Syrians, but Assyrians. And they lived up there in Kurdistan area, uh, lower Turkey, northern Iraq, northern Syria, those three right in there. And the Bible talks about it in the book of Revelation. It says he'll be an Assyrian. There's a scripture, I mean, excuse me, I said Revelation, but in the Old Testament, calls this man an Assyrian. Some think that he would be that. Uh, while Shubat thinks that it will be a man that will rise up out of Turkey. Isn't it interesting what's going on today? The very area we're talking about, with Turkey invading north, northern Iraq and Syria, trying to run out the Kurds, the United States is withdrawing. It's almost like God's lifting his hand, you know, and you got, you got that going on. Then, then I, I talked to Irvin, Dr. Irvin Baxter. We've had him on this show. He always says, he, he says, I tell you, I'm watching Europe real close. I believe he rises out of the European Union, and he's got a couple people he's talked to me about that's possible. And um, I've heard uh, Perry Stone talk about a different section of the world where he feels there's a possibility so there's a lot of different, and, and, and look, and I've talked to other people. There's a lot of people that have a lot of different potential ideals, and there's some scripture that can back all of those theories. The question is, how will we know who the Antichrist is? Well, you'll know him when he walks into the third temple. He will reveal himself, it says in 2 Thessalonians 2. But in the meantime, watch the new world order. Watch what goes on in Jerusalem. For as Dr. Lester Sumrall said, Jerusalem is God's prophetic timepiece. What goes on there 
will tell you the soon coming of Jesus Christ. I'll be right back in just a moment. A brand new six series study course I've just released on prophecy in the Bible. It comes with a DVD and a 20 page workbook to inspire you in the prophetic word of God. And Heidi has just come up with six series study guide as well on six women in the Bible. It is powerful. It will inspire you. You can get both of these series at my website. Get it now. It's powerful. All right, folks. And of course, there's some uh, great Bible teachers uh, always say keep an eye on Rome. Others say always keep an eye on the United Nations. Some people, as a matter of fact, the last four presidents have been called potential antichrists by folks across America. And you can go on and on and on. That's why you can't go by those things. You have to follow the biblical prophecy of the Bible. So watch Jerusalem. When you see a peace deal announced that allows the rebuilding of the third temple, then you know, as that temple's being built, you know at some point, and I'm not going to even tell you exactly the point because I think that might not be correct. I just leave that open-ended. But at some point, as the world is coming under the pressure of globalism, of super socialism, which are atheistic. All you got to do is go, just go look and see what they believe. They are, they are <clears throat> atheistic. They are globalistic. They are super socialistic. They are communist. They want to do away with the gospel. No doubt about it. From that spirit comes a one world government, a new world order, a mark of the beast system that is going to arrive, and it, it gets fully kicked in gear when the Antichrist declares he is God. It will not fully, the groundwork is being laid right now. Are you saved? It's time to give your life to Jesus Christ. We are racing toward the end of time. Can I pray with you? I want you to go to my website. You'll find out all about this stuff. I've got some great CDs and DVDs and things like that that would help teach you and bring you along. Boy, I tell you what, you got to get saved. I mean, it's time, folks. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's help these folks, Lord. Help them. Lord, we repent of our sins. We confess our sins. And we call on the name of Jesus. We're asking Jesus Christ to set us free, to break the chains, to break the chains to set us free. I repent of my sins. I confess my sins to Jesus Christ. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved.